Augusta Mila Fortero, if you could eat QA bite size in the Mesa, so and Lums Ben, Augusta Schwan. Um, you're very welcome to Bite Sizes uh, live QA for this month. Um, this month we are focusing on the thorny question of raising children through Irish, whether you happen to be abroad or whether you happen to be in the Gaeltacht. Um, it has its challenges, so Schwan mm -hmm. and I are going to be talking about challenges strategies and resources and um, that you might use or encounter when uh, trying to either give your children just cool focal or whether you're trying to uh, raise them with irish as their first language so the folder old chiffon and son too come on come on ben and what her products to hain yeah come on come on good oh, come on good. um so it's a complicated um subject um it's something that i try to do myself i have two children one is 14 one is nine and i tried and ultimately failed to raise my children with irish as their first or even close second language um and i think part of the reason why i failed was i didn't realize how difficult it's going to be um i thought i could simply talk irish to my son at home and that he would continue to speak Irish to me and anybody else who he knew spoke Irish and then would speak English to the rest of the world. But um, I found that it worked very well until he started a primary school. At preschool age, he had a little friend who lived near to us whose family also spoke Irish. And we car shared with um, that family taking him to and from the Neandra or the, the play school and it was fine so irish did was initially his first uh, language but children i think are hardwired to be as practical as they can with language and pretty soon they'll notice that there a lot of people are speaking this language and not this one that i have here and i think they just naturally for survival reasons go for the language which allows them to communicate most effectively with the most amount of people possible. So you kind of need to come up with strategies to counter that. Um, if you want to teach them minority language, it was a bit kind of confused in my house anyway, because my wife doesn't speak Irish. So you're having to say one thing to the child and then you're having to say it again in English so that everybody <laughs> understands what's going on. <laughs> and that's only going to last so long. So, um, that was my experience. It worked fine until he started in primary school and then he just was less and less interested. And although we would go home um, to the Gaeltacht and he would see, you know, that his uncle spoke all Irish and that his dad's friends spoke all Irish. He also knew that all those people also spoke English. So it was all a bit mixed up and ultimately it kind of fell away. Now I live abroad in Portugal and I suppose it's a case of absence making the heart grow strong, the heart grow stronger and that people don't appreciate things that are up close sometimes. And now that we're here, he seems to have more of an interest again in the language and in the culture generally. And fortunately, a lot of it is now hardwired into his head anyway from when he was small. So it's just a matter of kind of dusting it off. A lot of it is there already. So I suppose me say her in Ash Kibiam, it's a waste of time. So that's how it was for me. So, um, Siobhan, we have a few questions that have come in. Maybe you'd like to, to have a look at uh, here. I'll just read this one here. Kristen says, we've been practicing our Irish word of the week. So far, we've done fo'eadhi, underwear, and bo, ba, uh, cow and cows. Any recommendations for a pronunciation source for random words that we want to look up that are not, say, part of a course. What do you think, Siobhan? Oh, I think you're muted there. On Kish, there was a great question. Um, sorry about that. Um, so, 
Right, so I do have a few uh, recommendations. So what you could do, to be honest, this is actually an easier thing to do than you might imagine. So there's a, a few things. You could go on either chonglin.ie or folklore.ie and both of those they have options so if you go into chonglin you have to go into a special tab so that might be a little bit more difficult to maneuver around unless you know the website or get used to it but it's a great website so i do recommend getting used to that website but folklore.ie if you look up the word you will see a little um image of a speaker uh, next to it and you'll have um recordings in the three three main dialects and you can click one of those and you'll hear how the word is pronounced so that's the great thing about that now do do remember you if you look up words with like a shavu the h after the consonant um something like that for example you may find it very difficult to find the word so you have to get the basic form of the word first to use this or otherwise you probably won't be able to find the word but that being said, there are other options. You can go on to forvo.com. Now, on that one, there's many, many languages in Forvo. Um, but there's also Irish. And this one here is where a number of users have spoken, have pronounced words that have been submitted to the site. So maybe the word has been submitted already, or maybe you would like to submit the word. So you can submit the word. Uh, to the site and a real speaker a real person not automated or anything will say it for you now um maybe and the other option even though it is automated but it works brilliant is aber.ie and aber is it means say in irish it's the verb to say it's a, a wonderful resource because it actually does generally speak and work really really well i've been very surprised by it um so that's a, a very good one to try because even even if you have a shavu in there of a very grammatical form of the word so it maybe it's very different from the basic form of the word our will more than likely be able to um to pronounce it very well for you even though it's an automated sort of system so there there are your um different options there so just a, a, a quick recap Changlin.ie and folklore.ie, they're online dictionaries. Forvo.com and Aber.ie, they're your best options. It's a funny thing with the, the pronunciation feature on uh, folklore and Changlin is really good. And I don't think it was intended as a toy for children, but my children do actually really, really like it. And it's kind of a bit silly and a bit facile, but you know, if you give a 10 or 12 year old a dictionary, They'll probably do something like look up the word sex in it or see if it's in it or something like that. My children like to listen to the different pronunciation for the word bundun. Do you know what I mean? Bundun, bundun, bundun. So it just leads them on to different words and they have a bit of crack listening to the, they're not used to the Donegal pronunciation. They listen to it and they have a bit of crack listening to the different ones. And although it's not intended for that, one thing generally leads to another and they will learn something <laughs> doing it. But they do have a bit of fun with it, even though that's not what it was for. Yeah. So, um, so that's that, Kristen. And then Owen, um, this question came in in Irish. I'll read it out in Irish first. Siobhan. Um, uh -huh. uh, so Owen, judging by Owen's Irish, I'd say he's a monster man. He says, Be McDonald me ye hul the hilart na tanga get bile. Ach anishis rís tá dealt nú áras ag tachtarum fe ávar éigin tá gramadí. Cúrin sé sió imníram agus táma rálam hén an willam ag múna bútún fe láhar. Vára son cén achfán is fiár vehgum nú ar táma caint lim a fáistí. Tanglan, Facebook nú éin á téle. Dacar ólas tapa a cháilt nú ar táma ag maráchtant ag dévelad an dáun. So, just to summarize, Aspirla. Owen says, now and then I feel doubtful about any aspect, sorry, about an aspect of grammar. I get worried that I may be teaching my mistakes to my children. So what is the best resource to have at hand when speaking to my kids? What do you reckon, Siobhan? Um, well, on Kishtarit, another great question, and I'm going to reply in Irish and uh, also in English. 
Mar sin, Jordan, na bi ro warha fui wutu ni yena. Um, mar is layer gul gil gavragat, awan is layer gul. Um, agus arnoi mata evra sort galenu nuch fui vir egen uh, gramati vechita vuchtuche sin a ala mach and runji for sin a hass of gukinche. Uh, <laughs> Um, to hain, did chain, agus and chin, tiki to, uh, nor to a canch, agus, um, a coursey grammar in his, in his fair. Um, after a couple of sievan, um, marshin, a tossiever lina, um, a sieve grammar the new lairgish, agus, um, ton sieve shingama, agus, um, tess bonny machin, new lairgish. Agus said, uh, Tashi on down in a shock. Five lower grammar the in England shop a lower no at uh, Chagan new lairgus. Um, no fear earn the Haberchi Samplicha or Hyanglan nor folklore punkai gahariha is fager. Um, when I went to King Chicken, we can Haberch a hurlacale or to be in a Haberchi Samplicha or Oklor punkai on Kauruch or Fad. Um, being she on Kauruch. Agus um Marshin Marshin Tasha Shingama and Rudella Louis to Facebook to group on Gil Gawan Agus um being father of Keston Agramadi and Shin Agus uh, Anoi Nilshach the Rinita and on um Keston Akur as as Gilge. Um, Agus and Rain were a couple of forum, Ella, Marhampla, the Irish language forum, Agus forum, Dalti, um, Punkam, and um, and the, the forum Shin Vexheets and Gama Fresh and Mata Kishta, because it was Mono will to an on and Kishin a regard in a lower, um, grammatic Agus and Mulla Jernachatagam, no and lower Agus and Sea Vigilin. Gaskanch, Marta in Gaskanch, to Frosty, August Albert, the Usajaka, um, a do saw Chogalehul, Somalia, Erton Seafshin, on Waterfad. Marshin, so I'll just, um, I'll just say what I was saying there. So I was just saying there, um, so I was just saying there that it's, that it's that not to be too worried. About making mistakes in Irish, because for one thing, native speakers of English make mistakes all the time, um, in uh, in our everyday language, mm-hmm. and um, so it's not if you make mistakes in Irish, it's not that big of a deal. Of course, there's like in English, there's a, there's a degree of how big of a mistake you can make. Um, it's funny, yeah. It's funny, Siobhan. I was at a. I'm learning Portuguese. I was at a Portuguese class today, and we have a break in the middle, and I was talking to one of the lads in the class he's from london and he says to me you wasn't there last week and i had to bite my tongue not to correct him and i suppose <laughs> same in, in irish <laughs> going around correcting people nobody likes to be corrected but it's true you yeah, know happens all the time that's it so but i do believe uh, that grammar is important mm-hmm. and no matter the language so maybe what you what one could do is focus on learning um learning grammar yourself focusing on it yourself and then when you're wording sentences you'll have better knowledge to word them properly um there's that but also of course that's easier said than done and that takes time but if you have one particular thing specifically uh, i said as well if um if there's one thing one particular aspect of grammar that keeps coming up that keeps confusing you let's say you don't know the genitive of a certain word and you've used this word maybe three times this week and you still don't know the genitive you should really start looking up you know and find out what the genitive of that word is and you you can just go to the dictionary an online dictionary for that it'll it'll help you 
um, when it comes to um, but that's but you could get a grammar book of course or go on the website Newell as I mentioned there earlier Newell um, that's a very heavy website very detailed but it's very good like there's stuff on that mm -hmm. website that you won't get in grammar books at least I haven't seen it in, in many grammar books and of course the thing about grammar books is um a lot of what they're doing is making things easy to understand and uh easy to consume and they succeed with varying degrees of success but also a lot of the grammar if you're prepared to dig into it those resources are available online as well if you want to do the work yourself like um uh grammar and raw is there you can download that find that easily i don't know about on kaidan if you Google, whether or not that's available as a free resource to download it used to be. I, yeah. I remember it used to be anyway. It possibly so, still is. Yeah, so it can be, they can be a little bit hard to unpick, um, but the information is also there. Sarah Nashka, if you're looking for it. I have a question. Um, a couple of those resources that you listed I'm not familiar with. New Allergish, what's, what's the crack with that? So I believe the German is behind this, and often German, um, examples from German... Um, German grammar is used um, mm. and it's interesting now I don't have a word of German so no. um, very very little German mm -hmm. uh, so um, it's not much good to me that, that aspect of it but it explains it in English and it'll just sometimes give examples in, in German but I suppose maybe in some ways German gr grammar and, and Irish grammar would be would have many similarities so it is mm -hmm. good if one does mm -hmm. understand mm -hmm. um, the German but it goes into every possible aspect of grammar. It's uh, unbelievable. I don't really know the backstory of it. Mm -hmm, I, I, mm -hmm. it's, but it's like I, I, I would like to know because it's, it's the result is something I think more detailed and bigger than many things that have been worked on by committees for years. So I don't know. Mm -hmm, maybe there is mm -hmm. a big committee. Maybe it's just one man. I don't know. <laughs> but it is. I think it's a wonderful resource. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's a bit of a yeah, it's a yeah, so it's a very big website. Um, so there's a lot in it, mm. a lot in, it, and it can be very heavy. If it, so, it can take time. Sometimes you just have to like come out of there and be like, right, I didn't even think of that. And um, mm. so there is there is a lot in there. Very very good, very good though. I think very good, especially right. if you're if if you're a proficient or fluent speaker. It's, mm -hmm. That's the thing where you you'll get answers you'll get answers for questions that you didn't even realize you had. Um, so that's, a, it's, I think, it's a very good, very good website. Interesting. I must check um, it out. The, the other question I had was about Dal T. Um, like the internet is a bit like the Wild West. There's an awful lot going on. It's not all wholesome. Or, you know, you might look for information on Wikipedia and it's not necessarily correct. Or if you go on Reddit or Quora, a lot of this is kind of done by aggregate or, you know, it's somebody's opinion and, yeah, I kind of have to do your own research to see is it accurate or not. How, what way does Dalti, um, dot com work? That's, again, that kind of thing where people ask questions and somebody will choose to answer. But how, how reliable is the information that's on it, do you think? Um, I think it is pretty reliable. Of course, it is. It is depending on who answers, um, mm -hmm. like everything. Now, Dalti.com, I think, is a fairly reputable website. On the whole, mm -hmm. of course, it gives information on different um, things that are available, different, um, uh, you know, classes, mostly in America. It's mostly an American-based website, but also worldwide. Um, but when it does come to the people who reply, from what I've seen, most of the people know what they're talking about. It seems mm -hmm. to be one of the people seem to be honest. If they don't know, mm -hmm. they'll probably just say that they'll end mm -hmm. on as in mm -hmm. like there's a little addendum like mm -hmm. I, this is right or something but no from what i've seen when people seem authoritative they actually are from mm -hmm. what i've seen and that's so mm -hmm. all that, I, I think that's that's quite a, a good one very good and so goss Heint is a website and a book is that right and uh, that's it? right um until recently i thought it was only a um i thought it was only a book um, but it's actually a website as well. I only found that out, I think, when we we're preparing for this. And it seems like most, if not all, of what's in the book is on the website. 
Um, I know CDs come with the book. I just had a quick glimpse of the website, so I can't remember if there were uh, sound recordings or not uh, for the website. Um, but the, the, there are CDs that come with the book. So, um, and in the three different, three main dialects as well. So that's a good thing. It, uh, in the book anyway, there's three different columns and it'll say, let's say you have an example and it, it's a wide variety of examples. For example, um, or oh, please put on your pajamas or something, let's say. Mm -hmm. so it's a, and, um, or are you dressed yet or something like that. And it could be, you'd have it in Munster Irish, Ulster Irish, Connacht Irish, and in the CDs, just three different CDs each dialect so yeah. it's very good that way so you don't have to be thinking mm -hmm. too much you're worried that you're mixing dialects or whatever mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so it's 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 very good that way i think and it's just loads of different lo very good i think especially if you're not confident at all with your level of irish um mm -hmm. you can just get that book and practically memorize yeah. those phrases and it'll really help you. You won't be stu mm -hmm. stumbling over to things. Oh, how will I word this? Or what's mm -hmm. the word for that again? If you just know these these phrases, and you will learn by learning these phrases as well, of course, how to ask. Because yep. if you can ask the child, um, "Are you dressed yet?" You may you'd probably be able to ask something else. Are you ready? Or you know, all mm -hmm. these. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. You can just swap out words, of course. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's it's a it's good practice for yourself even mm -hmm. um, when learning Irish. So um, I. I think it's a, a great resource there. Well, it sounds like it's it's a really good idea anyway to have three separate CDs for the different dialects because, you know, it's all very well to point out to people. You could say it this way, this way, and this way. But when you present the three options side by side, that can be a bit confusing for people because they're hearing three and they have to discount two and make a choice. So to have a separate CD all together for each um, dialect sounds like a very good idea to me. Um, so we have another couple of questions there, Siobhan, but um, when we were organising this Q&A, I asked you to pick out your favourite three resources for parents who um, want to raise their children. So we were just talking about a book there, and the first thing that you picked out, actually, I think it was a CD, was it? Um, Googly as well, Gook. it comes to the C CD mm -hmm. as well, Googly Gook. So I think mm -hmm. um, the three that I... Um, chose they are more geared towards younger children mm. um, uh, so, but one of them the last one I'll mention they could, it could be for slightly older children but googly gook there it's um, a book of nursery rhymes and you could also if you put in googly gook on YouTube you will find that there are some of the songs and rhymes uh, and verses on YouTube as well and because they had a little show maybe they still do I'm not sure they used to anyway have a little show. Is uh, Tyg McDonagh on? Tom Carthag, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's mm -hmm. right. He's behind us. And I believe I if I, my memory serves me me right, his wife and at least one of his children, I think, used to take yeah. care as well. Mm -hmm. So now that they're older, maybe maybe not, it, it, they mm -hmm. don't have the show anymore, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. But um Googly Goog is the name of one of the 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 Little verses and it's a lovely verse. Yeah. Team Canela, thank you. Mm -hmm. I, I think there's another one about mm -hmm. that as well, but it is also it's got the same theme. Yeah. But um, yeah, so it's a lovely little one, Googly Gug. And um a lovely colourful book as well, and come from the C T. Lovely. So before you move on there, um we had Googly Gug when my children were small. And it is brilliant, but it didn't really suit us 100% because it's very much Connemara Irish. So one of the things that I picked out um, is similar to that, but it's more the West Kerry version, which is Shikin Michigan Son of Sosta. And that's uh, Bernie Fod, Ivar Hertig, and Paddy Barhan, the Shano singer. And again, it's a similar sort of thing. Maybe not as much on it as there is on Googly Gog, and it doesn't come with a book, but it's little simple little rhymes nicely done and um, donna hennessy um ex-guitarist from lunasa does the music and um although my nine-year-old knows even less irish than my 14 year old she really enjoyed that and she learned all the songs when she was four or five like so that's a good one so if you're going for Connemara, uh googly gug can't be beat and shikin michigan son of sauce the um 
Bernie Ford and Paddy Barton is a really good one. So what did you have then there after Googly Goog? Um, so Sean, I, yeah. um, was mm. a, I chose um, a collection of Lower Tile mm. sensory books in Irish. Mm -hmm. Now these are more geared towards very small children, of course. And we'll have a link in the blog post and I'm sure the link is up there as well. So yeah, those touch and feel sort of books, and they, they they're they're lovely. And the Irish is actually, um, it's not extremely simplistic. It's simple, but not extremely so because I think sometimes with children's books it can be way too simple, just one word on the page. Mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. Um, so it can be good. They're, they're good little uh, books that way, and so cardboard books as well. So those hard hard books. So it's um. Sort of more childproof, so they're, they're lovely little books and they come very cheaply. And um, there's, I think, four in, I'm not sure, I think there's four um, there. But they do different ones there's one on the farm, there's one in colors, um, and I believe there's a few more as well. Shapes, I think, I can't exactly remember, but there's a few there. Uh, so that's a nice little one, uh, of course, for young children. Well, maybe I'll take my second one there. So before you move yeah. on, because you were talking about the Irish in books for children being very simple. And in terms of this one here, it's very much not the case. This is Scalene Ovalin, um, was put together by the University of Limerick and Irish Reina in West Kerry back at 2003, I think it was. And it's um, archive recordings of Bob Ferter, who was a Shanachi from Dunachin. Um, and the interesting thing about this book is a lot of time with books, the book comes first and then you have an actor or, well, yeah, an actor, I suppose, reading it. Um, but the reverse is true here. The voice element and the storytelling comes first and then the book is based on that. And her storytelling is really, really rich. It's bail, it is folklore, folklore stories from Kirk Ohina. The Irish is very rich, an awful lot of lovely turns of phrase in it. Um, sometimes I feel that modern children's book in Irish can be a little bit kind of sanitized, a little bit because I suppose they're tied in with the Kaidon and the education system and that this is a little, for me, a little richer than a lot of the stories that you would get for um, children. Um, in modern publications and great music by Steve Cooney as well. Lovely art by Don Lobrick from Dun Khin. And um, this is one <laughs> I probably shouldn't be recommending a book that's out of print, but the reason I'm doing it is that this is one of the things that my children most enjoyed um, when they were small. And if enough people maybe get onto Eirach or Gugine, then who knows, they might do another run of it. But, uh, it's a good, it's a great one. I don't know, you might find it somewhere second hand. But, uh, really, really good production all around. So that's Shkeli Novaini. And there's a link there to the Irish Herculina website if you want to go and look at that. Um, so Rawa Ivrichi and Son Witcher and Count Chosair and Ashka Gusleaf Oil, our YouTube. Um, yeah, so it's Lorming Ailes. Uh, YouTube playlist called Scale to the Farsi, and those are books for children um, being read aloud. And it's uh, the camera is situated above the book, so you can actually see the book that's being read aloud. And um, it's it's very nice, uh, very nicely done, I think, because you can read along. So this is one I've actually recommended for adult learners as well, even though they're children's books, because it's great. It's simple enough Irish compared to a book for an adult, for example. It's simple enough Irish. You're able to hear it. You're able to see it. Um, so it's it, it's very good, I think. And of course, you can see, especially for children, they can see the pictures and everything. So I think it's a lovely little resource, maybe if you're doing some screen time for a child. Mm -hmm. Maybe it should be good to sit them down in front of that. And at least they can read along and listen or even if they're not paying attention to the screen just look at the pictures or if they're not paying attention to the words just look at the pictures or something like that or they'll just they'll hear the Irish anyway so it's very good I think it's very very good um so I think that's a wonderful one there's I can't remember how many but there are tons of, of mm -hmm. books like that way more than 50 if my, my 
could be going on a hundred, I think. Mm -hmm. I can't remember now exactly, but there are a lot uh, on that on that playlist. So it's one that will take you a while to exhaust, I think. Just leave it on a loop all day long. Passive <laughs> learning. <laughs> Fine, lovely Gormagot. Um and then my third choice, which I'm sure now this is it's not even an Irish company, Useborn, um, Book of Irish Everyday Words in Irish. Um, but I suppose one of the reasons why I recommend it is it's easy to get no matter where you are. The other reason is that, again, the kids really like the pictures in it. They just really found it engaging. And um, anytime I picked it up, they were more than happy to sit down and go through it and point things out. And it's it's just scenarios like a room in the house. You're a Christian and it's just all the various things that you encounter in the kitchen. Show me sit in or show me see. And that's it. Very simple. Um, and uh, available on Amazon. Again, there are lots of different versions of these books. I think you picked out um, one as well um, during the course of getting ready for this um, very first words in Irish. Again, I think that's the same company. Um, and they just did a lot of different versions of these books, Usborn. I think they update them fairly often, but um, they are very engaging for children. So that's a good one. To get your hands on you'll get that on amazon if you're abroad as well so we have a couple of questions come in there siwan um there's an interesting one there i was wondering about myself like we're in portugal and there's a little boy in my daughter's school now who lives in switzerland but his mom is from portugal and she decided that she would like him to have better portuguese so he's just there until christmas time you know, just kind of dip in, improve his Portuguese before he goes back to Switzerland. And when I was in school in Balnerterig, children would come down from um, Inchicore and a couple of other places in Dublin, and they would stay for a few months just to learn some Irish in our school before they go off again. So there's a question here um, from Cumrodi Magee, you know, Cumrodi Magee. And she says, Steve Horta, is it difficult or even possible for non-Irish citizens to send children to Ireland for Gael school? Or would there be short term programs available, perhaps? That's something I hadn't considered. But um, do you have any idea, Siobhan? Oh, um, well, when I first read this, I thought it was just sending them to a Gael school, but sending them to Ireland if you're not already <laughs> living here. That's a whole different uh, story. Um, I well, I suppose to be the. I don't know of any organised thing. I guess it could be worked out with some host family and stuff like that. Mm. Maybe if one got in touch with a particular Gale school you were thinking of, or would know a number of Gale school. In there, I I'm not sure. I don't know of any particular initiative to do this. Um, though I think when you could, I get, I'm sure you could send children from abroad to the Colosh the Saudi. Mm. To a class to Saudi, and because there is the host family there all set up, and it's only for a while during the summer, so that's definitely a possibility. But when it comes to a Gale school now, you would need to have more that that's something that you I think have to really organize yourself. Um, and that would be a little more difficult. Um, but especially since it's a it, I, I think often the spaces in schools are quite limited, so. They, they probably would be, I'm not sure if there would be places for short-term students just coming for, let's say, three months or something. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if that would be a possibility, but it's good to yeah, get in touch. It's an interesting question. Um, I mean, I don't know about you, but I would make a distinction between Gael school and school sa Gael tucht. Say a Gael school mm -hmm. being a, an Irish language school outside of the Gael tucht and then a school in the Gael tucht. And mm -hmm. it strikes me that you might fare better in trying to find a place for a child in a school in the Gaeltacht because there would more likely be space in a school in the Gaeltacht. That's a very um, good point. Yeah. But it's an interesting question. I mean, I have a friend who um, takes Spanish students in um, when they come over here to learn English and they stay with them, you know. So you'd imagine if that's possible, then if this doesn't happen, then it's something that could happen, let's say, that children would come from the UK or from America or whatever it happens to be um, to spend some time learning Irish in uh, school, whether it is in the Gaeltacht or a Gael school, indeed. Yeah, 
It's an interesting yeah. one. Yeah. Um, Anwar, uh, and I just see there's a question there just about the links. Um, so any of the links we posted uh, so far, of course, you can click on the screen, but we will post those in the blog post. And that blog post will be linked, um, if it isn't already, I don't think it currently is, but it will be linked in the description box of this video. Mm -hmm. Come back mm -hmm. shortly afterwards and you will have all the links up there. Um, uh, so, yeah, so um, we'll do that. Lovely. And of course, if people are watching the recording of this, we will be checking back on comments. So if you have questions, you can just drop it into the comments there down below the video and we'll have a look and get back in touch with you. Um, so we may just return to um, some of the questions that came in over the past week. Uh, we have a couple there now. Um, where are we? Who's Lynn there. Fairly straightforward question there. I love some resources for my six-year-old. Says Lynn. Gramagat Lynn. Um, Gramagat. Uh, Marshin. So there, I have a few resources um, to recommend, and. I think it does depend a little on the standard of Irish your daughter already has. Does she have any Irish or have you been speaking some Irish at home already or what's the story? Now, if I think if your child is a beginner or, or even not a complete beginner, but somewhat of a beginner, I think Buntu's Kancha is a nice little, um, little series. Now, it is quite old fashioned, quite dated, but it, it has little cute cartoons and it has daily examples of conversations in it. So I don't think it's that, that bad of a one um, to maybe show a child um, or an adult. So I'll just write up that one, Buntu's Kindship. But as I said, it is quite dated. I'm not sure if there's an updated one, but um, it's easily found in libraries in Ireland, Buntu's Um Another thing I would recommend, I think it would be quite good for children, is actually Duolingo, uh, especially for the first, if the, if, if the child is a complete beginner, because it's gamified and stuff like that. So I think if the child um, does have, let's say, does have a smartphone or something, or plays games in a smartphone, maybe just, you know, a bit of that, it can make Irish really interesting for them or pique their interest a bit, and it, it can be fun. So I think Duolingo would be good um, just as a, you know, as, as an element of their Irish learning. Um, um, in a way, you could immerse the child, in a sense, by them, by having them watch Kula Cahar. So Kula Cahar is the Irish, uh, the children's version of TG Cahar, so the Irish language um, TV channel. And um, that has loads of different programs in Irish. It has dubbed versions of popular um, popular cartoons. Yeah. Yeah, like, oh, oh, let's say Peppa Pig, I know. Um, what else Does it have Peppa Pig? I, I believe so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, my children love Timmy on that. T-I-M-M-I, -M -M -I, I think it is. And that's made by the people um, who did Sean the Sheep and Wallace and Gromit. And it is something, it's a bit like, I suppose, when you hear um, a popular song, Don Asgailge, it gives them some frame of reference. Do you know, they it appeals to them because they're already familiar with large aspects of it. So they really liked Timmy and it's done in a really effective way. It's just a great way to learn nouns. It's a great way to learn action words and counting and things like that. And it's done in a repetitive way. It's designed as a learning tool originally anyway in its English form. So that transfers really well to the Irish um, version that they have on Cool Car. So my kids really love that. They found it really funny and it's short as well. And they review things at the end. So they kind of get to learn things, they encounter things twice. Like So it's a really good okay, uh, learning good. tool. Yeah. wasn't aware of, of, yeah. of Timmy but yeah the, the cool Cahar has um other sorts of programs as well more like science programs and a day in the life of one specific child who speaks Irish mm -hmm. which I think would be brilliant for mm -hmm. showing a child because I came across the story there of a woman who's trying to teach German to her child and at first the child had no interest whatsoever um but 
she showed the child videos of other children speaking German. And then he was much more interested. And um, he, he he then was going around asking her, what's this in German? What's that? So I I can fully believe that I suppose every child is quite different, but I could I could believe that that would, uh, would work in Irish as well. Just seeing kids talking and playing in Irish, uh, especially if you don't have that in your local area, if you if you don't know children who who speak Irish at home or go to a gay school. So I think that's that's a very that would be a very good find one of those um I one of them was called Misha. Misha it's Misha, I think it was just called. I can't remember exactly, but it was a series. Where um, you have a different child each each hmm. episode. Yeah. And they just I am so and this is what I do and this is my uncle and we're going cutting turf and that's sort it. of thing or yeah, I'm yeah. to mach and going out fishing and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's a good little program. Mm-hmm. So that's that's one. Uh, another thing then is there's a great website with loads of resources on it for children, and it's Laylet. Laylet. So read, go on and read, sort of anything. Um, and it has loads of little poems and stories, but it also has um all uh, different um. Uh, breeds of birds, for example, on there, and this is a little map and or little birds on it around Ireland, and um, it, it's it's a lovely little website, I think, um, Laylet, and that's a nice one. And of um, another one, similar now to one that you recommended there yourself, Ben. Um, very first words in Irish, Nakedochel Gaelge. So that, of course, it'd be similar in it would show you. The different things that you'll find in the kitchen or something like that um so it's it's very good and there's um and it would be an easy enough one to find i believe as well um and the last one then is a website called changachi um the house language the language of the house and this uh, supports parents it's more support for the parents um but that being said it has loads of uh, common rhymes on there, um, little rhymes and verses and videos. And it, it has lots of resources for the children. And it tells you how to promote language speaking from from infant, from infancy. Um, so it has loads of, of, um, of, of tips and stuff like that not just in Irish, but they also have an English version of the website. So if you go onto the website, Chang Chi, um, you can just Google that. Uh, I think it's Chang Chi, one word, dot IE. I can't exactly remember now, but we will put the link in the blog post. So um, so it's, it's very good. It's very good. So even if you don't feel confident enough in your Irish, you could definitely get that. Um, have a look at that, uh, the English language version of that website. Um, so that's that, that's um, that's that's one. So I think there's, I know a bit of a deluge there of <laughs> of uh, different um, resources, but there's just so many. I think and mm. good to mix uh, mix and match these, and even some of the other resources we mentioned earlier, like that uh, YouTube playlist of stories and stuff. I think that would also be good. So. Um, but these are just ones that I, I knew that we wouldn't be mentioning otherwise. But uh, I hope all the best of luck, Lynn, um, with, uh, the, the, with um, teaching your, your, your child uh, Irish. Anavan, yeah. So that tongue of tea is a, a very general and useful resource by the sounds of it. And one, I think that would be of use to Kevin, maybe. Kevin, as a very broad, it's a, it's a big question, and there's no kind of easy answer to this one. There's no kind of one size fits all with these things. But he says, how would you work with the all-round presence of English when living in the UK, although we spoke German at home, after a certain age, the children began to always answer in English. And Kevin, this is something that's even an issue in the Gaeltacht, you know, um, especially i suppose when children are coming in from outside it's there is a tendency for people to speak english out of politeness or out of convenience for the the people who are coming in and things become diluted in the schools uh, to no fault of anybody um but i've observed this you know um without wanting to 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 name anybody but in, in my own family say where and nieces or nephews of mine would be going to school 
um, they're still they're uh, they're hearing what's said to them and understanding, but the tendency is to answer in English because English is just so pervasive um, in the world. So I suppose if you're living abroad, the first thing I suppose is to set realistic goals because if you don't set realistic goals, it's very easy to become disheartened with things. Um, all of the resources that we've mentioned tonight, of course, um, would be useful. But I suppose if there is anybody else trying to do the same thing as yourself in your area, it's good to build up a little network of families um, that also um, speak Irish in the home. But of course, you have to remember that language isn't necessarily everybody the most important thing in everybody's life you know you have to make decisions for other reasons so it can be very difficult to to counteract the the effect of whatever the dominant language is in the country where you are um would you have any words of wisdom on this Siobhan? well i think this is a problem that doesn't just affect minority languages like mm. in the case there that kevin mentions uh, with german in the uk and I know of Polish families, for example, in Ireland, and they have the exact same problem. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they speak Polish at home. Both parents speak Polish to the children, but the children, once they start going to school, they start replying in English. Mm -hmm. So um, I think there's a few elements here that's important. I know that um, what linguists recommend when it comes to teaching a child a language um, is that at least one parent would only speak that specific language to the child. Mm -hmm. Now, that's easier said than done, of course, but I think especially when it's just one-on-one -on -one with the child, that, they, that, they, that that's their language, that that's the only language you would use. I suppose if you're out and about and there's like another person in the conversation, that's a bit different. But um, I think it's fair enough that, and I think it's doable, to be honest, um, that any time there isn't a third person in the conversation who does not speak Irish in this case, that you would only speak Irish, and that's a given. Mm -hmm. um, of course, now, the thing is, what about when, of course, the child gets to that age where they don't, they start replying in English? Now, this is where, well, it's theory on my part, but I think this is where, basically, you can call it a few different things, mindset, ideology, whatever. I think that's where that comes in a lot. Like, I think the child needs to have a why not just okay i'm going to reply in irish because mammy wants me to or daddy wants mm, me to mm. there has to be a deeper understanding some some deeper fundamental philosophical whatever understanding um reason and of course when they're extremely young that's not going to be there it's impossible because they don't have anything like that for anything mm -hmm. but there has to be i do believe that this is that that um would be a way of um, of having a child stick to the Irish language if they have a very good reason. They have Pocket money. <laughs> Pocket money, sure. <laughs> well, there's that, there's that maybe. But I would think more something deeper as in a, a, a more a, maybe a, a, a worldview uh, in a mm. sense. So teaching a child, and of course that's going to be very different for each family. But let's say if, let's say in the case of a family that's very nationalist, um, there could be that element to it. Mm -hmm. But, um, of course, there, it depends on the family, not necessarily would have to be that. But um, I think that there has to be something much more, much deeper, I think, than just speak Irish because we're speaking Irish. Yeah. I think there has to be something deeper. Yeah, yeah, I think that's true. And what I've, what I found myself is that as adults, we make decisions for sentimental reasons or for reasons of principle. Um, but young children do not and they won't really take that on board so again this goes back to being realistic in your goals you will make a certain amount of progress by a certain stage you will probably lose some ground from there on but they probably will if there's a particular sort of philosophy or view in the house come back around later on maybe in their early teens and that you know and then some of the work is already done so again as i was saying it's a matter of dusting off what they learned already and then they can start to build on that again and even growing up in the Gaeltacht, irish wasn't cool when i was young i do know that we had to be told to speak irish in the yard or let's say we weren't allowed to speak english now that must have been happening for a reason i don't remember making much of a distinction but 
if we were told we weren't allowed to speak it, then we must have been speaking it, you know? And then as you come around into your teens, you start to appreciate things a bit more, to understand the why a bit more, and then you get back into it again. I think that's normal enough with a lot of things. So, uh, yeah, I think what you're saying is true. It's just that they're only re receptive at a certain age, and before that, they can't really take that on board. I think. Yes, and sense. I think as well, what you could do maybe to bridge that gap there um, from when they're very young children and they just do whatever mammy and daddy does basically and then I suppose they rebel a bit and they might come back mm -hmm. then uh, when they have when they're able to um to think about it deeper more deeply but I think one way of possibly bridging that gap would I would imagine would be maybe if they have a particular hobby or something and being able to incorporate Irish into that um if there was um just uh, just an example let's say if they play a Gaelic sport and there's a local um, club that's an Irish language club, like, you know, there's one in Dublin, for example, at least one. Um, so maybe they'd be interested in going to that club, um, for example, or maybe on a smaller scale, even just if, if a child is very interested in, let's say, nature and um, get maybe get them books on that and show them videos on that particular topic in Irish yeah, so they can see yeah. this is real this is real mm -hmm. life stuff this mm -hmm. is a now it's a bit harder to get you see that's the thing often it is but as uh, often they're out of print I think as well that's that's another problem but um so some of these more detailed books for this sort of age group about the age of t uh, 10 let's say Mm. But they, they are there. there. There are these things. And, for example, if a child is interested in, in in history, let's say, you could show them many of the history documentaries on um, on TG Cahar and just um, edge them towards that. And, um, of course, everyone has their own ways of, of parenting and their own approaches. But I think it, it would be one has to approach it. I'd imagine in I, I'd imagine it's not easy. Um, especially as they get older, um, because That's, there's so many elements to it, mm. not just simply speaking. But there's mm. so just so much around it. Mm. That's true, and that's a good idea. And I'd forgotten that that's something I was doing during the lockdown myself um, with my older boy was um, showing him documentaries on teaching Kahar as part of his history, or he's interested again in nature and, and things like that, and doing it that way, you know. Um, and you're kind of killing two birds with the one stone, you know, in terms of covering his uh, his Irish education and his general education during those the dark days of homeschooling. Yeah. <laughs> so there's another uh, question that's come in there, Siwan, on Bunthus Kainte. Um, uh, Language of Football is asking, if you completed all three books in the series of Bunthus Kainte, what kind of level would you be at? That's a that's a good question. Um, I I don't know to be honest. I don't mm. know. Um, I'm going to venture, I guess, a sort of higher beginners, something like that. Maybe you'd have a better idea this, Ben. I don't know. No, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> no not very very. <laughs> I'm not, I I wouldn't have used Buntu's kind of much. Mm -hmm. Um, not very much. I would have used mostly other books with learners. But um, and it's been a good while since I actually perused Ubuntu's kind of uh, book. But I would say to be more like upper upper beginner, uh, I, if my memory serves me right. Very good. Sorry to put you on the spot there. <laughs> I, I find it hard to believe that you could do three books of anything and and not be uh, not reach that that level that they they wouldn't be designed so that if I haven't done three, you wouldn't be at um, upper beginner. I'd say anyway. Um, so that nearly brings us to a close, Siobhan. Um, just to remind people that we'll have show notes um, just showing where various things happened in the course of the conversation up on um, the bite size um, the page that's linked to this. So that'll be here, bite size Irish blog on raising children with the Irish language. And we'll be keeping an eye on comments that come in um, below the recorded video of this over the next week or two 
and we'll answer your questions there if you have any more questions on uh, the topic of raising your children with the Irish language, whether it be Kupa Fuckle or Miafa uh, Machsamach. Um, so I don't think any more questions come in there. Uh, see so anything there? There was a, an interesting question. I um, this one here from John Paul. Oh. And, um, does anyone have an idea if there was any places in London where children could learn Irish? I left Ireland as a child and the family never spoke Irish and so the language is lost. Um, can you, I, I know that there's, I think it's the Hammersmith the Hammersmith, there's a, I don't know if they would run classes for children, but I know there are Irish classes in London and I I think there might be one for children, but I would recommend getting on to, I think it's the Hammersmith Irish Cultural Centre or the Irish Cultural Centre in Hammersmith. I think it's in Hammersmith. I might be wrong, but um, the, I would get on to them and they possibly would have um, the Irish Cultural Centre in London, I guess if you just Google that even. So I'm sorry, apologies that I don't have a more concrete answer for this, but I'd imagine they might have one. And uh, so to get in touch with with them. Um, or there's also, there's a, also, of course, um, oh, Ben seems to have dropped out there. Um, but um, there also see, there's also Conrad Nagelga, in, in London. So if you get on to Conor and Aguilga, they might be able to help you there as well um, and guide you in regards um, your children learning Irish. Maybe they have a, a class for children uh, also. So Conor and Aguilga, I'll just type that up so people can see what that looks like spelt out. Conor and Aguilga. So Conor de Gaelga, London, if you look that up, they should help you. And also the Irish Cultural Centre, which I believe is in Hammersmith. Oh, but it's in it's in London anyway. Um, um, all right, so Hammersmith is only for adults. All right. Um, so, um, so um, but possibly, okay. Um, yes, so that's good. Yes, that's, that's right. So very good. So hopefully, um, hopefully you get started there, John Paul, um, uh, and you find someone who teaches um, Irish to children in London. Right. Um, so um, it seems that Ben must have a problem with his internet. Um, so let's see then. Um, if there were any questions left, um, I don't think there were. Uh, no, we didn't have any more questions that came in. And let's see if there's any more questions in the comments. Um, um, so that's a, a good question there. Um, what's our dream for the future of the language? And definitely I shared the same there that it would be a language of the community among the majority of people in Ireland, um, for sure. And that would be lovely. I, I don't know if it'll ever happen, but it would be lovely. Um, but I think for the most part, I think we should, in my opinion, focus on what um, Patrick McPierish, Patrick Pierce, was, his goal was a bilingual Ireland. And I think that's the most realistic goal in today's world, given just how global everything is and um, how English is in practically every language in every country now. Um, so I think um, a bilingual Ireland, um, similar to many other countries that are bilingual, um, would be um, would be a lovely goal to 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 to, um, to achieve. Um, Marshin. Um, Martian, it's got so good in a maid, so that seems to be it. Um, seems like, um, seems like, um, Ben can't make it back. So, um, I guess I'll wrap up for tonight and, um, 
so let's see now. Uh, just uh, yes, so some technical difficulties. But anyway, um, so Lauroi may leave Galuri. So we'll we'll all talk to you soon again. It was nice having you here. Got a mahagi as the question. I thank you for the questions, and um, see you next month. Slang folin.